Hi, I'm Danny. How you doing, I'm Mark. And we are The Script, and you can check out the meaning of The Man Who Can't Be Moved on Smooth Radio. And what first inspired us to write the song, um, at the time, uh, radio um, was quite um, dance-led and dance-orientated. And there was, there was, I think, this feeling that we had when we were, we were writing an album, we, we, we kind of completed our album, and, we were very unsure, I think, at the time, about what songs we wanted to kind of portray and what we wanted to be as a band and stuff. And um, the, the record label had, let's say, basically closed the album. So we, we they were all high-fiving because we had songs like We Cry and Break Even and stuff. And um, Man Who Can't Be Moved had, was one of the last songs to have come along. And it was it was kind of, we describe it as a Forrest Gump style song. It was a song that um, we didn't actually, I didn't go back to the corner where I first met my ex-girlfriend. Because that'd be weird. It would be very, it was very stalkerish, you know. Um, but um, in fairness, it was the song was about true emotion and true love, and um, not having in a day where a lot of people would be able to buy somebody back or give them enough flowers to win them back. What happens to people who don't have money? You know, what do they do? And it's like to do something, um, to do something selfless, and to do something that you don't really know, and to just kind of put it out there with fate. And that's what we wanted the song and we just wrote the song like a Forrest Gump style character who goes back to the place where he first met and he doesn't know why. He just wants to sit there and he's going to wait and hopefully her friends will see him there. Maybe it'll come back to her and, and maybe she'll come to, you know, and in the, in the bridge is maybe I'll get famous as the man who can't be moved. And maybe you won't mean to, but you'll see me on the news and you'll come running to the corner and you'll know it's just for you. Um, because I, I believe that that was missing at the time. Maybe I'll get famous as the man who can't be moved. Maybe you won't mean to, but you see me on the news and you'll come right into the corner. What was beautiful about it was that the rest of the world felt the same. You know, um, the, the song just took off and it really changed our lives. It changed, um, it's put clothes on our backs and it's put a roof over our heads. So to me, that's that's the real kind of power of, of and the magic of music as well. And probably a little, uh, a little, uh insight into why we wrote it was also, I don't know if you remember this, but as you said, the middle eight is one day you'll see me on the news, uh, you'll hear me on the radio, you'll do that. That was the literal part of the song and <clears throat> the whole point of that was being able to, we were both going through breakups from, not the same girl. Because that'd be weird. Uh, uh, that would be weird. Um, Ex-girlfriends, but you don't want to give them homage and let them know this song is about them. So that's, the middle eight was a way to say, hopefully one day you'll see that we got the real job, it actually worked out. And yeah. And how you like me now? <laughs> Have you ever had any exes contact you? The cool thing about, for money. This is the cool thing about <laughs> never, never letting any of the exes know the songs are about them because they all think it's about them. That's yeah, the every one of them thinks it's about them. That's the thing about being vain, isn't it? Yeah. So, you probably think the song is about you. Yeah. <laughs> it isn't about you. It's yeah, about the other so one. Right? Okay. All right. You probably think the song is about you. <laughs> Yeah, we were in Barnes. It was in um, the old Olympic Studios, which was the sister studio to Abbey Road. Um, we were very lucky enough. We had a studio right beside Pete Tong, where thank God it didn't all go Pete Tong nope. on, our, on, our, <laughs> on our album. But um, yeah, it was in Barnes, a beautiful studio. We, we still have the foosball table actually from it in our new studio. But um, yeah, uh, rest in peace, the Olympic Studios. Uh, I think we first realized is that when on the day of release, it's always like, oh, it's great, but you never really know how it's doing until you get midweek. And I remember midweeks were like, it was like, it's your Katy Perry. It's your Katy Perry. She was kissing girls. She this was is kiss the problem. Yeah. <laughs> we can't beat a kiss I was girl. Si I was sitting on the corner waiting for a girl to come back and she was, I kissed a girl and I liked it. Yeah. That was the song we were up against. Um, and I just went, I couldn't believe it because Katy Perry was such a huge artist to us. that we're like, I can't believe we're even fighting for any position with, with, with her. Um, but um, yeah, that we, we then realized it becomes such a massive, massive song when you start seeing famous people singing the song, Ed Sheeran doing a cover version of it. You know, it's just those amazing things that are just staple diets now. It's, it's, it's online, you can check them out singing. One night he just picks a song, he's like, I love the script, and it was sent to me, and I'm like, I can't believe this is amazing, so good. Going back to the corner where I first saw you Gonna camp in my sleeping bag And it's not gonna move Got some clothes on cardboard Got you picturing my hands saying If you see this girl, can you tell them where I am? We yeah. both have known each other since we were we were twelve yeah, years old. Time. So to 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 be there and like I said, we've we've been through everything together. You know, we've been through the brawls and drunken nights and 
even funerals, you know, we've been through it all, lives and deaths and births and everything. So to be able to stand on stage with where you're not just somebody you're in a band with, but your best mate and someone you've spent a lifetime with, um, it makes everything sweeter, you know, it makes, um, and also perseverance. Uh, we have another uh, saying, which is love, loyalty and friendship, you know, and they, they're, they're, they're things to really, really live by, you know. Music video, video for the Manic Music Happy video for Manic Happy Moves. Uh, remember that, where was, that was Los Angeles. Boom. We are, do you remember we made a snow in Los Angeles? So if you see the, it's yeah. snowing in the video, that's not real snow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, LA, come on, it doesn't rain, snow in LA. snow, sleet. Yeah. Well, it does, but just in different ways. Yeah, I suppose, but, you know. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, we, we shot it on, the, um, on, part of it was on set, part of it was out in the street. Um, but the, the parts out in the street were was incredible because it was, uh, we were broke. We we're sleeping on people's couches, and then suddenly I'm on LA Street. There's a whole production team around. It looks like we're shooting a movie. Um, and I, I felt really special that day. It was pretty. The weirdest not, place we've not, heard of. Not like. necessarily the weirdest place, but the place where I got the most plaudits for um, was you. Can, I mean, we've been all around America. We played on David Letterman. We played on and um, we don't like. Had interest in Jimmy Fallon and all these kind of amazing, amazing um, American shows. It was my mum calling me up and saying, "They played it in the back of Coronation Street. Ah, you're famous now, you know." And yeah, I was, the, uh, in the pub, in the radio, in the background. Yeah, it's playing there. You know, you've made it. Come yeah, hundred percent. Come on now. How would it compare the last time to Man I Can't Be Moved? You know what? It, it, we always try to do something different. We always try. Uh, like even the label will often say, "Can you write another man? I can't be moved." And we always say no because you couldn't anyway, if you, even if you tried. But we're just not even interested in trying. We want to just move things on all the time. It, songs to us is like a snapshot in time. It's yeah. like a moment. And so the last time for us, it just feels like a, a totally new uh, thing for us. And it's it's I guess represents a real exciting moment for us to come back uh, to the industry because we don't take it for granted. Uh, you know, we're going to be on smooth. Uh, we just don't take that for granted. What we what we do hope is that we have a comeback and a series of comebacks all the time. So we always call it that. It's a serious comeback. Yeah, so yeah. The last time <laughs> is not a cryptic message. Just want to say this. We, um, we were kind of gamifying it online, which means we were, we were kind of leaving little Easter eggs to what the name of the title of the song was going to be. And it started to cop on, it was almost like Hangman, you know, when you guess the letters. And some fans started to turn around and be like, the, the, la the past time, the last time, the, the last time. No, is this the last time? They're, no, please don't tell me you're splitting up. So it caused a bit of a really, really massive frenzy. It was about 80,000 people all trying to guess whether we were going to break up or not. And I was like, no, but you know, with that amount of people, it really interested. Maybe we should. Maybe we should break up. Yeah. <laughs> We'd probably be, be in a bigger band if we just broke the band up. Yeah. This is what happens. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, please don't. Please don't. No, but it isn't. We are absolutely going to be around for a long time. Thank you so much for watching us babble on for, <laughs> for a while. Um, visit smoothradio.com for all your classic songs.